So I have a, a pan of watercolors right here and I put the uh, skin tones already in here. So it's, it's pre-mixed just for that. Good stuff. I haven't used these in a while and I love watercolors. I've been meaning to try that. Like uh, I wanna start uh, trying different mediums. Like uh, I do wanna do painting and watercolor at some point. I think that would go good with your style actually because you like to go pretty fast, you know, and I think watercolor is really complements that. I haven't done that since high school. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I remember enjoying it. It's, I hated it because it just never, you know, you have to like be patient with it. And I didn't have that in high school. So. Right. Yeah. But when I see Kenneth's Rockefort stuff, it's like, wow. uh, it makes you go, you know, maybe I should give it another shot. <laughs> that boy is a monster. I know. He is. Have you seen his uh, creator own book? Yeah, I uh, I backed uh, part two and I got part one. Like if I I do that, like I'll have the I'll have it set, you know, uh, for some campaigns to mm -hmm. to uh, back it, and uh, I've lo I've forgotten on a few. Yeah, and I, I, I but, think I backed his too. But yeah, luckily he did the part two, and he. He had a section there where you could get part one as well. So. Oh, that's smart. Okay. Yeah, like that's uh, something we should do. Yeah, I know. That's a good strategy. I'm learning a lot from what you guys are doing since I haven't done my own Kickstarter yet. So I'm just uh, kind of sitting back and just watching. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the stuff we pretty much uh, got from uh, Brian Polito. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. He's a he's a master at that. So yeah, he's the king of that. Yeah, so we're just sort of following in his footsteps, like yeah. just like okay, what well, what did he do? How much did he charge? You know, what are his tiers? And just trying to do something close to that. Well, shout out to Brian because uh, I got yeah. to work on a few of his covers and <clears throat> for the Kickstarters, and they were really really fun. Yeah. And no, he's an amazing guy. And like his packaging and his boxes when you get them is like like an experience, you know, which is what I love. Yeah, it's like, um, I mean, I've had a lot of conversations with him before we did the Kickstarter. And uh, I mean, he had a, a lot of great advice. It's just like, I'm, I just haven't implemented a lot of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's been doing it for, I think, 10 years, right? Like he was one of the first uh, ones. Yeah. yeah, I I I wouldn't know. Like I wouldn't. I don't know the the exact uh, time frame. But so. yeah, he's definitely uh, he definitely knows how to do it. He's uh he's got it down pat. Mm hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm actually uh, stealing ideas from him too, and how he does things, and his interaction with the fans is also what's really amazing too. I think that's it right there. Um, having the such a uh inviting personality mm -hmm. uh yeah like uh yeah like he he was saying basically you know that's one of the things uh i need to do is be a little bit more um you know out there <laughs> and get myself and uh i was just like uh i mentioned that it's just not i don't feel comfortable doing that and he was like well do that just tell the people that you're not comfortable doing that's you know, like, awkward joe <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like uh, it. It's not. Um, I always. It's not second nature had, to you. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing is, uh, I, I was really, you know, my philosophy was if uh, the work's there, if you like it, cool. If you don't, that's fine. You know, it's just like if it's your thing, you know, support us. If it's not your thing, then you know, no biggie. We understand, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, just. Uh, haven't been I'm not good at selling uh, or you know promoting or work <laughs> well let me do it for you <laughs> yeah the thing is it's like uh, that was one of our because Marsha is the same way you know we're not very um, yeah I'm just out there uh, mm -hmm. extroverted 
Like, ah, yeah, I have yeah. my I have my extroverted moments, but uh, a lot of times they were alcohol induced. So it's like, <laughs> uh, not naturally, I'm I'm very quiet and to myself unless I'm around people that I'm that I know and I'm comfortable with. Sounds like a lot of people, though, honestly. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's like uh, some fans uh, rem remember telling me that uh, they had a nickname for me. It was uh, Surly Joe. And I was like, <laughs> what do you, why? Well, it's like when you're, you know, like when you, whenever you're at the booth, you're just so quiet and surly and you look like you're pissed off. And, and really? it's like, no, it's, it's usually, uh, well, this is back in the 90s and I guess oh, early okay. 2000s. So it's like, I, I was like, very likely I was probably hung over and I, I just didn't want to be there. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Story of what we go through, right? Like, right. Well, I have a lot of fun with you, so. Right. Regardless, but yeah, we had our fun times. Um, the few times we got to hang out, I I remember all the stuff that you would say, like, would crack me up. Like you and uh, I told this story when um I was talking to Francis when, with our podcast. It was about what you and Carlos Dienda said about like when you first got to, uh, got into comics and how you guys thought you were gonna get your uh, Vipers, Dodge Vipers, and everything, oh, and yeah, Lamborghinis, yeah. and you guys <laughs> ended up with like s sloppy seconds, I guess. Well, it's the first day. Uh, yeah, I think it was literally the first day that I, I joined the studio. Like I, I was, uh, I got hired in September, right? Was it September? No, 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 in August because uh, Comic Con '93, San Diego Comic Con '93 was in July. A month later, I sent my um, my submissions because uh, Mark asked me to send more submissions, and I did. But it took me a month. Oops. Uh, did, did you die in there? <laughs> so I, it's uh, like that. Okay. And dropping all kinds of stuff. Yep. So it's like. Uh, I got there like uh, in September, and when I got there, one of the guys, I think it might have been Brett, had a new, well, a new car. And I'm not good with cars, you know. I just, you know, I, I looked outside. We were on the third floor uh, of this uh, office space, and I go, out, I look out, and I see a row of like five or six brand new, um, thirty to forty thousand dollar cars. And in my mind, I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I made it. I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm in the money now. Yeah. But, yeah, by the time I actually got a book out, it was a year later, and the market had kind of oh, readjusted, and it, it just, the sales were just not there. Yeah, I know, and it's it's so timely. It's kind of crazy how it does fluctuate, and unless you're, like, in the thick of it, People mm. don't realize how much it, it fluctuates based off of what you're experiencing, you know, um, on the ground level, I guess. It's It took, a, uh, like, I remember one of the books uh, at the time, and I, again, I remember it, uh, the, basically, there was a, a uh, if the book didn't sell over 200K, mm -hmm. this is back 93, Dang, 94. that is crazy numbers, but yeah. yeah but, it was uh it was you know supposedly it wasn't good enough to com continue that was the sales then or that's what i heard and i remember one of the books in from the studio sold 175k Jeez. so i know the artist working on it was a little like bummed out and he was like oh no you know the book gonna get canned and uh but then they were like no nah, no nah, it's it's fine the it was it was just it wasn't a uh it was something they said, but I, I guess it wasn't reinforced. I, and it's also like a sliding scale, probably, right? Uh, well, what do you mean? Like, if it didn't sell that amount, but what if, like, it picked up momentum later on and oh. it was just a more sustainable book? No, no, I mean, even back then, I think a, a book selling for, a, you know, selling a 175K or even 200K, I think. If I'm not mistaken, because uh, the prices were what, like two, two, three bucks, or I don't even remember how much we were charging uh, books yeah. back then. Maybe it was like two something. I don't know if it was close to three. It was like two forty-five or something. I had it to look, but yeah, it wasn't that much. 
because it's like uh, basically the the publisher tends to get around half so of the price of the of the cover price. So you know, even back then, they're making a pretty pretty good coin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I missed that boat for sure. Yeah. I was trying to break in and it was, I was like still just fresh out of high school. Um, didn't, and I was in Washington and there was, I didn't have the resources to, uh, to get to that point, but I did, um, I did go to a convention in Seattle and I met David Wool and he was the one that kind of helped, uh, help, you know, develop me as an artist back then. And I was still going to college, so I didn't really pursue it much, I guess, for three years. Right. Yeah. But I guess David hired everybody during that time, right? Yeah. David, I think David pretty much discovered, I think he discovered everyone at Top Cow or, you know, a, a good portion of us. I think it's like me, uh, Billy Tan, uh, Dave Finch. I think, well, Mike, uh, I think Mike Turner might have been Renee or, or I, I don't remember who exactly found him. Like, I think he sent in some submissions and, and uh, I don't know, I, like, I don't remember if he was actually discovered at a show. Mm, yeah, I don't remember either. I mean, I somebody talked about this, told, uh, mentioned the story. I just don't remember exactly, which is kind of sad, right? I, I should probably know that um, if I'm going to do something with his uh, biography. Right. Um, but I, I'm actually still working with Renee on her uh, this new project uh, that I cannot discuss. But um, she actually put my artwork in the Fathom number eight or seven. Really? It was like in fan art. And so okay. I, after that point, I'm like, you know what? I could totally do this. Cause there's this, you needed something like a sign to tell you that you, you know, right. you had the chance and opportunity to do that. So I jumped at it. And uh, so I never got to tell her that yet. I should probably tell her and, and thank her for that. Right on. Yeah. It's a, uh, back then, you know, this was 92, 93 for me. And, um, this was a big boom, uh, like Valiant was kicking out. It's, you know, it's like uh, Image was was brand new and they were all looking for new talent. Mm -hmm. So it's like, uh, I was, uh, I was submitting uh, my submissions left and right and I was getting rejected all over the place. Like, I think every company rejected me. Marvel, DC, Extreme, Valiant, they, you know, uh, I. I remember getting the the extreme letter with a bad rock on it you know basically saying hey you know something like keep it up but it's not uh i don't remember exactly what it said but it was basically you're not good enough for us right now but keep at it that's interesting uh, and um but at the time i had such a cocky attitude it was just okay well then i'll do better and i'll just keep going at it because i uh, i was pretty much sure that i was going to get uh work like I, I remember telling jim uh jim lee that uh i had in my head that i'm gonna work with this guy one day you know yep and so it's like uh so yeah it, it was uh I kind of forced myself to not, oh, the, I guess it, I never felt any, um, uh, what's that word? It, I never, it never like brought me down. Discouraged like I, you basically? I, yeah, yeah, exactly. I never got discouraged. It never hit me. Like it, it was never a, oh, well, I guess I'll quit. It mm. was always like, okay, well then I'll do better and, and I'll show you. It was that attitude, like, I'm going to yeah. destroy, I'm going to show you exactly what I can do. Like a little chip and, on your shoulder, right? Kind of? Well, it, it's, it was just like... It wasn't even really a chip, uh, but yeah. I, I had, when it, came, when it came to my work, I have had a lot of confidence. Like, um, it was just, uh, I knew, I was, uh, I believed in my work. Uh, you know, other, other things in my life, not so much, but when it came to my work, I always had a very strong confidence with mm. it with my abilities and i think it was just because uh again from the world i was coming from my family and friends you know they would all talk about how great i was so <laughs> it, it was in my mind i was of course i'm great because they all think i am 
but it wasn't until I got hired that the reality set in. Yeah, and my abilities actually um, uh, were tested because it's like that's when I found that's it's like I guess when you're the best football player in, in high school and then you go to college and everybody there is the best football. And then you player. go to the uh, pro NFL, yeah, yeah, NFL, and you're like, now that's like another whole another level, you know. And uh, so even though you made it past one tier and you know you're there. Did you feel like you got you had to start from almost like the bottom again? Oh yeah, yeah. At every point, it's a, it's just like uh, I need to show, I need to up my up my game. I have to find some way to overcome, uh, and that's when I, I actually. That was the first time I had doubts in myself, and it took a while to to overcome that, and I think that was actually the. Uh, very detrimental because it, it really affected my work. Mm. Um, so were you scared to experiment or what, uh, what uh, happened? Um, up until I got hired, I was experimenting all the time. I was mm. altering my uh, style. But once I, I got hired, I felt I needed to kind of stick, uh, to, it. stick to the, the style of the, the house style. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, even though you look at uh, um, you look at different artists uh, from that era that were part of the homage studios, it's like they have a very di different look, but there was still a, a certain style overall that uh, that slick, uh, cool, dynamic uh, vibe. You mm -hmm. know, all the lines were very clean. It's a Jim Lee, Mark, Wills, uh, very uh, heavily rendered uh, uh, style. That mm -hmm. I, it was a it, that clean rendering that I I was just not a clean renderer. Like my uh, style was always a little messier, and I think primarily because I wasn't. Um, I hadn't mastered anatomy yet or rendering. So it's, I was just throwing lines because I thought they would look cool, but mm -hmm. it wasn't really throwing the lines to indicate uh, shadow or shading or, or, you know, curvature or any of that, you know, it was just ooh, hmm. put a bunch of lines here and that'll look cool. Well, we'll be, it's funny because we've all been through that phase, right? Like, I mean, I, I could say I did that for a long time until finally I decided like you, I think we all go through that phase, right? Where you're like, I'm not good enough. You know, I got to be more decisive and be more thoughtful and, and, uh, or quit. But then it's like, you, you've already sunk so much time and effort into something that you just can't quit. I guess mm. that's where we were at. Cause you got, you got the job. So you know that you made it. And let's just say you, you were like really losing confidence. What would you do? You know, if you're not to draw comics, um, cause you wanted it so bad. Well, it's, uh, I had a slight, um, net after the, because after I got hired at Top Cow Image uh, Homage, I got a call from DC and they offered me work as well. So I, I I was I had that in mind like okay if I don't make it with these guys uh, I have that as a backup I can always maybe hit uh, DC up and mm -hmm. uh, see if they'll if they if they're still interested in giving me work. Mm -hmm. They offered me a Batman book. Nice. But it was at the time working at Homage and working with those guys was the the top for me. That was just like there was no other place I'd rather be than working there. True. So there was uh yeah, it was it was just like no brainer. It's like go to DC and work at uh on Batman or stay here and work with these guys. So that's interesting because, you know, uh, I noticed that a lot of us, me included, um, I'd rather be at a company where I love the artist or I look up to them or, you know, have something to learn from them. So it's not just about like having the job. It's also mm. about like the people that can challenge you, whether on purpose or not, you just have like that subconscious feeling of I need to be around that person all the time, even though they make me feel sick to my stomach about my own art. Right. <laughs> right. No, it was a. Uh... I feel like uh, having working around those guys really pushed uh, 
my abilities. I think it because affects it's, everybody's it's, ability, though, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just like, uh, you know, you have, you have someone, you know, what, uh, this guy turns in a cover or that guy turns in a page and it just, uh, it makes you want to get better because it's like, wow, look at what they're doing. I need to up my game. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was that, there was always that competition that uh, I know at the time it was just this fire in my belly that I, I really wanted to be number one. Mm -hmm. I wanted to destroy uh and basically destroy just means, you know, kicking ass on my oh, own. Oh, yeah, world. yeah, of course. <laughs> and uh, um, and it, it just, I mean, there were moments when you're like, wow, that that guy's just, that's just so amazing. It's like, I need to really push myself. And I think it really did help, uh, help me. And I, I think it helped others move on to that next level. Yeah. Art-wise. Um, and I'm wondering because you know how the people stopped working in studios because I remember telling uh, Mark Silvestri this a couple years like not yet, it was a few years ago at Comic-Con how I am so envious of you guys because you got to work in that studio environment it's competitive but in a good way like you got really good really fast and right. it was like friendly competition you know and we all or you guys all benefited from it so that's the one thing I you know, I regret not having is that studio right. environment with your, where you're with other creative, very motivated artists, you know? No, I, I, I'm, I always say I'm in, extremely fortunate that I was able to be part of that. Uh, it's, uh, again, like uh, working with some of the top talent in the industry and, and learning from them. And, um, that was just an incredible experience. It's, a, uh, um, it's, my favorite uh my favorite time in my life is uh, it's uh that one year working at homage and working at topco in those early years it was just uh i learned a lot yeah i don't doubt it <laughs> i wish I, you guys all turned out to be like amazing artists i mean everybody that worked at the studio you guys are legends now you know so take uh, it just a, how you will <laughs> If you're if you're in the industry long enough, you get legends that. legendary status. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, how many years more do I have before that happens? Well, <laughs> I'm I'm celebrating my thirty. Oh, I'm celebrating. I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna be thirty years in the industry this September. Nice. So it's Good. like uh, this coming uh, on San Diego will be my thirtieth year attending. Dang. it. That's amazing. My, the first year I attended was uh, was as a fan trying to get work, and then the last twenty nine were you know as a professional. Well, you know what you get, you got there because you said uh, you're super confident and and you had that chip on your shoulder, and I think especially for the competition that's out there now, you kind of need that right to succeed nowadays because there's so much competition out there. So you have to be willing to like, uh, kind of brush, brush it off and stand, get back up, I guess. Yeah. It's a, you have to be confident in your work. I mean, that was actually one of the best advices that, um, when someone was look, looking at my work and it's like, said, your line's not confident yet. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't understand that. And it took me a while to, uh, really under grasp that. Oh, it's, it's that it's like, you have to put your line like, you know, you understand and not just be timid about it. Mm -hmm. Even though it's scribbly to most people, it's confidence, right? Like it's trying to find that thing that's in your head. Right. Yeah. Oh, I know. I mean, like I looked at C because Marcia was asking me for some sketch covers and I was like looking through all the old sketch covers and it makes me cringe because I know then I was like not confident at all about my yeah. mark making. Yeah, it's like uh, I, I get a lot of, uh, I look at a lot of uh, my old sketches that I've done. And the thing is, a lot of them were free. And mm -hmm. I wasn't really putting all that much uh, effort into it. I was just kind of cranking them out. You know, yeah, here you go. But now those pop up and they look, they're so embarrassing to look at. Because <laughs> they're, they're really, they are just got awful. And um but I can't really. Can't take it uh, back. Uh, Internet's yeah, forever, I think, Joe. I was I was actually uh, considering like, uh, <laughs> I think I mentioned this before that uh, hitting uh, 
the owners and saying, look, bring your sketch uh, <laughs> and I'll redraw it. I'll, I'll fix it. And, but on the one condition that you wipe that image off the net, you need to get it all out. <laughs> but yeah, that, what is it? Uh, everything on the net lives forever. So. Yeah, and then the internet's forever. Yeah. No, and not only that, but sometimes they, they don't even have, they didn't put the picture up or someone else did and it just kind of catches yeah. on and then you have it in multiple areas and it's like, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, it's like, uh, but again, uh, it's there. It's it's just like uh, it's a, <laughs> that's why it's like uh, to, like, yeah, the yeah. young artist. It's like it's a understand that always try your best mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. it's like uh, that's the representation of your work. And uh, when people Google it, that pops up. It's that's what people are gonna think your work is. Yeah, I guess there's two ways to go about it. Like either be okay with the fact that it wasn't good and just kind of let it go, or try harder. Right. Right. Yeah. So that it doesn't. Well, that's a uh, that yeah. that's something that I uh, always tried to. Uh, or if you're not digging what you're doing now, it's it's just like just get it done, move on to the next piece, and try harder on that one. And mm -hmm. and it's just like it's just a process. Uh, the more you do it, the better you get. And yeah, um, it's just a uh, was it? Uh, there was this one uh, study or this one uh, this. Uh, Basically, there was these two groups. They did this experiment. They had one group um, do the best. They they told them the instructions were do the best ceramic cup you can think of. Mm -hmm. You know, put all your energy to making it the best. And the other group is do as many uh, yeah. of the ceramics cups as you as you can. Just make as many as you want, anywhere you want them. Just do it. And the best ceramic cups came from the group that did a bunch of them. Mm, because it's like mileage you know yeah you're just doing you know you're a lot of times uh your best images are the ones that you're not really putting all that much thought into that you're just going with the flow you know you're just instinctively doing yep. yeah yeah there's a lot of times uh i mentioned this before my my mind will get in the way like sometimes you have to get yourself out of the way of your creativity because usually you that's the case yeah, that's usually that's the case, man. Oh, I know. Like right now I'm kind of uh, coasting on this. I think it's maybe it's the watercolors and maybe it's just because you obviously did a great job and I don't feel like it completely, mm. I can mess it up too much. So I feel like I'm in my flow state right now. Pretty cool. All right. Yeah, yeah. but it, there, like uh, while I was working on that, when I first started on it, it was flowing and then it, I lost it. And I, I, I think I redrew it like... Uh, maybe four or five different uh iterations of it like uh her outfit kept changing and then at some point i was just i need to just get it done and what basically it was like whatever whatever it ends up looking that's fine just let it go <laughs> well it looks awesome um thank you did you have a color in mind for her vest since i, I forgot what the uh, other variant covers looked like so is there a color that color scheme we could go with no, I'm, I, that's why I left it open. It's uh, I, I just assumed uh, just a different shade of of the blouse, but mm -hmm. it's like whatever whatever catches your fancy. I like keep it, gravitating it towards it. You know what? Uh, could I'm yeah. I'm gonna grab your trade paperbacks really quick, okay? Mm. Okay. So let's see here. Let's put this one back. That's cool. Okay, maybe not this one, and this one, this one, this one. Okay, okay, I'm gonna go with these three. Okay, I'm just gonna flip through, uh, like, you know, some of the stuff I have here so that I have an idea of what's already done and if there's something I gravitate towards. Yeah, actually, the, yeah. Uh, the covers, it's usually there. That's mm -hmm. where I tend to do variations. And the thing is, when I was drawing that, I see that that image. I was I was desperately trying to find that image on the net, and I couldn't find it. This one right here? No, the other one. This one? The one yeah, it's. Uh, I wanted to do something similar with the uh, with the uh, blouse, but it's like uh, 
I couldn't find it on the net and I didn't have the books in front of me. No, oh, you did it. It looks like you did. It's, a, it's like a silk kind of fabric. Well, it it kind of ended up looking like the image that uh, the one right before it. Mm. Mm -hmm. you know, the whole oh, outfit. yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK, OK, I see what you're doing here. Um, actually, I was thinking yeah. these colors, too, so. Actually, I like this green right here. That's cool, too. Man. So many Do whatever, different... whatever you think looks good. Yes, because I, you know, like when I do watercolors, usually it's for something, so I don't get to pick what um, colors I right. get to use. So if there's a color I haven't used yet that I think would look really cool, I think I'm going to go with that. So, uh, uh, it, was it a uh, Microm? Uh, he posted something where when he's working with uh, a client, and they say, draw something, make it look badass or make it look cool. <laughs> and the thing is, that's usually my instructions to artists. It's like, I don't know, just do whatever you think looks good and make it look cool, whatever. <laughs> so I need to be more specific with, uh, with my instructions. It all depends, right? Some people want free reign and others need like, they need a direction, I guess, but yeah, you're well, right. I, I guess, I, yeah. So cool. Do I see flowers next to the uh, hat? Because if it is, I'm going. I'm going to render I that tried, out. I tried adding something, but uh, I mean, whatever is there, it's like uh, I. I don't know if I did it completely, but I. I started adding some, and then. Uh, so it's like if it looks like flowers, it's probably flowers. <laughs> or something. Okay. You uh you decide what, what it looks like. Mushrooms. There you go. <laughs> I guess we get to show off the 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 book we have here in the stream. See, ta-da! Look at this, it's magic. La Belle Dame Sans Merci. I love, I love this one. I keep going back to this one. I think I'll, I, you know what? I think I'm going to leave the color of her hat and her vest for last, so that I could, you know, once I uh, render everything, I could tell myself if I want like a darker blouse. I mean, a darker vest. Maybe that's what I'm going to do, and mm. keep her uh, keep her top like a lighter color, just so that it's not all one value. Looking good. I should probably just start doing the lips and stuff because I'm getting anxious. Like I really got to do it. You know, my favorite part. Uh, what's your is watercolor your favorite medium? Um, yeah, if I had like more time and, you know, that would definitely be my favorite. I don't really do Copics anymore because it was just, it was so tedious, you know, to like refill it and, and right. like the, the smell and it, it's not archival, I don't think. So there's just a lot of things working against it. Um, I mean, I, I enjoyed that process of learning how to use it, but you know, I'm kind of experimenting with like color india ink and watercolors now gotcha like yeah i, I like i mentioned the uh, watercolor uh painting like uh acrylics and oils but i also want to start uh doing some washes i really yeah. like i really like the what a lot of these uh other people do and these other guys other artists mm -hmm. uh who are you thinking like you talk about matteo he does some of that. But, yeah, it's like uh, I was just looking at uh, Richard Friend. He's been posting some oh, seriously yeah, those amazing were so pieces. good. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. agree. And, uh, I follow him. It's amazing. And um, so it's like I, I like what he's doing, like uh, adding that little gray, uh, gray sections to it. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see what else. I think uh, like Sean Murphy's doing some really nice stuff with uh, the Sharpies. Did you he, see it, that? Oh, uh, oh, the. The, the color sharpies, yeah. yeah, the sharp, yeah, the Hume color was sharpies. Doing that too. That's amazing. I was like, huh, yeah. it works for his style. Like that looks really cool. Yeah, I mean, it's like uh, when I see new artists. At first, I get all butthurt that they're so much better, <laughs> and then it's like it uh, it lights a little fire. Like, okay, let's let's up the. Let's get the work, you know, like level it up. Mm -hmm. 
But that's what uh, Eric Kennedy was saying, how like, uh, because I asked him, does he think the ratio of good artists now is the same as before, except now there's you see more of it because of the internet? Or mm. is or is there actually more artists that are really good? And he's like, I think he thinks there's more, you know, just yeah, in, no, it's yeah, uh, percentage wise. I think, well, again, they, um, they, they just got better. I mean, you, you had Kirby and then it went on to uh, Neil Adams and John Byrne, then Jim Lee and Mark and Todd and it, it, and you know, the newer, you know, all the artists that in my era fed from those guys. And then it's like, uh, then the new guys fed from everything before it. So they're always moving up a level. Mm -hmm. They're always, uh, they're taking what's been there and uh, elaborating on it. Like, uh, I, I still feel strongly that there's a pre and a post uh, Travis Charest, uh, you know, artist out there. Like without, before Travis, there was a look, there was a, again, the John Byrne, Jim Lee look. Mm -hmm. the and then after that it went into a more uh, 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 a tighter cleaner very uh very clean line that you see in like uh olivier Cop copel and mm -hmm. steve mcniven and you see a lot of these guys that, you know that have that very uh but again i don't know if they're actually influenced by travis but it I definitely see it like Lando Francis Yu. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. uh, I remember him saying that Travis was definitely a, a big influence on him. So I'm, it's I'm, like- uh, I'm gonna have to look up Travis because uh, I don't, I might've seen his work, but honestly, I don't remember it. Oh, so it might've been right before blasphemy. me, you know? Yeah, oh, yeah. It's like, it, it, try a uh, pick up uh, X-Men Golden Age. X-Men, uh, Wildcats X-Men Golden Age. Oh, that's okay. The, okay. That's pretty much the book that, uh, I think shifted like uh, I know for us uh, at that time um, like you could see a lot of uh, the ciphers done in the ultimates that um, I forgot his name um, the artist who did the ultimates uh, Brian uh, Hitch oh okay yeah like uh, if you see Captain America the the way he designed Captain America looks there's a lot of like Travis hints in there nice well yeah, I have to do my uh, comic book uh, research here, art research, because right. every time someone says a name and I don't know it, I feel makes me feel like an imposter, almost like damn it, I don't know art history. So, well, it's like uh, I wasn't big on on artists that before the '80s or you know, like before the late '80s. Mm -hmm. I um, I started to discover them. Uh, yeah, like I mentioned, uh, Barry Windsor Smith was a, a big influence on me early on, but I didn't know his Marvel work. I just knew his work from uh, Valiant, you know, like uh, what he was doing with uh, Valiant at the time. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I saw what he was, what he did for Marvel uh, with uh, Conan and um, Machine Man and X Men and stuff. And, well, Weapon X. I think that, yeah, the Weapon X I did. I did see that, so I'm. Uh, I got to correct myself on that. I remember seeing that, and that making a, a very big impact on me. Silvestri was my guy, and and uh, so my dad bought my brother and I like the Crunch Conundrum with uh, was it Mystique, Spiral, and Mojo. Oh remember? right. And so when I saw that, I was like, okay, man, I want to learn how to draw like that. And then I saw like you know those ads for the T-shirts, remember with the X-Men, and it had like uh the x-men he did uh jim lee did and then i was like okay i really want to draw comic books <laughs> so it was yeah, jim like, lee yeah it was uh um uh, i was into gi joe's at the time because i was a kid uh that collected the little figures now i'm mm -hmm. a, a 50 year old who still collects gi joe's but at oh, the I time uh, but at the time i bought um uh, a comic, a G.I. Joe comic, that led me into the comic book world. Because, I mean, I knew of them, but I never mm -hmm. really yeah. bought comics. And I used to go to thrifties and liquor stores. <laughs> That's uh, the liquor stores where I first bought the my first comic book. Um, That's so crazy. Yeah, it's like uh, it was a liquor store across the street from uh, my sister. She, at the time, she had leukemia. Mm -hmm. So... 
we, uh, I would take, uh, I would go because my parents had to work, or my mom had to take care of my uh, other siblings and my dad worked. So I would take the bus and take her to get her chemo. And my mom would give me five bucks uh, to buy like chips or soda or a snack or McDonald's or something, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, there was a liquor store across the street from the hospital, uh, the children's hospital here in LA. And uh, I went there and I, instead of buying chips and soda, I, I bought, uh, or on top of that, I bought a comic and it was a G, one of the GI Joes. Uh, and I took it and that started me into this whole, you know, buying comics. And that led, you know, I ended up trying to finish the collection and that introduced me to G.I. Joe yearbook number two with, that Michael Golden illustrated. And, and that thing just blew me away. And then I, I was introduced to X-Men Avengers. That's the first time I, I, I was introduced to Mark's work. Um, was it? Yeah, X-Men versus Avengers. Mm -hmm. I think that, yeah, I think Mark did that. Then uh, Punisher War Journal that Jim did. And then it Spider-Man with uh, Todd McFarlane and New Mutants with Rob Liefeld. And uh, yeah, it's just, uh, it just became an obsession. So did you, when did you start drawing then if you were exposed to them after GI, like you, because of GI Joe, no, when was, did you start drawing? I was drawing from one of my earliest memories is uh, being at, uh, my mom was a seamstress. She worked at the factory. Uh, um sewing you know dresses and and uh at a factory they they clothes manufacturer mm -hmm. and um we lived uh, across the street from the factory so she, you know she was taking care of me uh and she would cut these big sheets of butcher board and i would be on the floor drawing spider-man and oh, fire nice. trucks Aww. and uh and when i asked her how old was i around then she's like you were around three or four. Oh my so, god so I've been drawing, and I, I remember as a kid, uh, I would, <laughs> there's a shop, um, I think it's Zodi's. It's not, it doesn't exist anymore, but it was like a Target back then. Mm -hmm. And um, I would steal the tags from, that had Superman <laughs> and Spider-Man on them. I, would, you know, just I know, I know what you're talking about, yeah. And take them home and, and draw, copy like the Spider-Man or the Superman or Batman or whatever cartoon that happened to be on the tag. Yeah, I was a little thief back then. I think we all were until we realized, oh, you're not, money is, it, it, it's a thing, you know, like people don't just put stuff in their carts and uh, just walk out of the store. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. I knew I wasn't supposed to, like, uh, I remember there was a, uh, these, uh, what do you call it? Um, these little cars and one of the cars had a trailer with a little little motorcycle and it was a little loose so it popped up so mm -hmm. as uh, we're walking out the store i drop it and i pick it up and go ma look i found this little motorcycle and, and she got pissed she's like where'd you get that uh it was right here on the floor no it wasn't there and she forced me to take it back and oh, i yeah, thought i was yeah. smart <laughs> she knew i was thieving <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's adorable. But um, yeah, the the what do you call it? Uh, the comic book. I mean, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get into drawing comics until probably fourteen, fifteen. Mm. That's when it. it uh, and again, it was the yearbook, GI Joe yearbook number two uh, that Michael Golden drew and Larry Hammer wrote. That really, I was just like enthralled by the images like I would look at it over and over like uh, I would always see something new there was so much detail and so much energy and I, I just couldn't believe that someone, someone that, was right? It. Mm -hmm. right and then and, and the thing is that that's where I was uh, there was a certain magic before breaking in where you didn't know how the how the I guess the Office cake was baked. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's that's yeah. it right there. Uh, yeah, like uh, I was always, you know, you get it at the end of the month. Um, 
and pick it up and you, you're just surprised by what was created. And now I'm sitting there watching these images get created from scratch. Like there was, was one time it's like, uh, we did, I think it, it was for uh, the art of homage. There's a piece oh. in there that Jim drew of a uh, Gen 13 and a T-Rex. And um, oh, yeah. I remember, Remember, yeah, I remember the, the I remember seeing the piece on his table, and it was just a a, a very very loose uh, shot of the T Rex, just shapes mm -hmm. with a fully drawn like I think um, uh, grunge, and it's like it was basically from just squiggles. He was able to bring this to life, like he was just drawing as he went, and I was just so shocked by that and amazed by how good it looked and uh yeah it was just coming out naturally yeah i know and and i still even now i don't know about you but like when i see artists um just the sketchy stuff not the stuff that's already done but when they have the sketchy stuff i'm like how do they how do they put like five or six lines together to, together to create like the fingers and the hand or a foot you right. know like so those type of things like i think a lot of artists, they love the uh, works in progress and stuff, because I know I do. I, um, I, I prefer that, like when I get a sketchbook or an art book and it's fully rendered stuff that that's seen print, it bores me. Yeah, because I, I, I want to see the I want to see the the underline. I want to see the the base. Yeah, um, because that's where the energy is. Mm -hmm. Like uh, some of my favorite things to look at when I was at the studio was uh, were all, all of Mark's layouts because it's like he would put them all up. So you'd lay out the whole book first, uh, you know, Cyber Force, uh, Darkness, whatever book he was working on, he would lay it all out and you're looking at it and all the information is there, but it's nice. all very roughed out lines. Yeah. So you don't know what it's going to look like, but in your mind, you're putting it all together like, oh my God, that's, good. you know, so you're, there's uh, the inf all the energy, all the information is there. And, uh, but it was always, once they were done, it's like, it didn't quite have the same energy. It's still there, but it's, it was, uh, uh, it was different in my head. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah. Yeah. I see what you mean. Oh, I still did that. Like this, I did a piece recently and I was like, man, I stiffened that thing up pretty good after I started inking it because, right. because the really important parts, I still didn't know what I was doing in my head. Mm -hmm. So then when I started to ink it, it just kind of. It was going all over the place and it stiffened the art so bad. And I was like, I wish I could re-ink it, but oh well. It's a, it, yeah, when you hit that, that regret of not being able to go back and do it. I mean, that's what happened with the, the piece <laughs> that I did. Like, uh, two days ago. Yeah, I don't know if people realize that. Yeah, it's like you're not watercoloring the piece that I did for the last episode. But there's got to be a way for me to do that one too. At least one with her suit because I love the uh, diving suit. Right. Yeah. Well, so, it's just like it was. It was one of those like uh, I had it in my head. It's like I should do a diving suit because there's you know the diving suit that. thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. But the other thing too, it's like well, these are variant covers, and and some of the most successful variant covers that we've done have nothing to do with the story. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah like uh the ones that stand out a lot of times are just um i feel like drawing mechanica with day of the dead or a valentine mm -hmm. you know uh image or you know uh saint patrick's day or whatever mm -hmm. and it it just like it those are fun because i don't have to they don't have to fit in with the yeah theme of the story yeah just draw what you want I'm thinking about going in and adding the the darkest darks in our hair and stuff um, just to bring no. it out. Otherwise, I'm going to end up with a, uh, oh, yeah, maybe I could do that. Like a, a vest, the, the color of the vest that I don't want, you know, because right. um, I'm still trying to figure that out. Let's just hope I don't do what you did two days ago with the diving suit. You're like, ah, sorry, Joe. Yeah, but I have, have to, to print it, it out again. Two right. watercolor pieces. Do variants. Are you going to post that drawing anywhere or is that locked in your uh, closet? <laughs> yeah, it'll, 
well, I, it's more uh, material that we can use for. Uh, oh, okay. To put in the book. True. True. We'll do something with it. It's just mm -hmm. it's one of those I uh, I just need to separate from it for a bit <laughs> and uh, remove the the feeling. Uh, the cringy feeling. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, even that that image I, that you were inking, there was moments where it's just like sometimes I, you know, I'm just in that head where nothing clicks. Yeah, it just I doesn't know that. work, and and uh, and yeah, and uh, there's nothing that I can do to make it work. I think it's the flow state thing again, right? Uh... Well, I've noticed it's like, um, and this again, this might just be my own weird psychology that a lot of times it's like if i'm uh, i draw different depending on whether i'm drawing from the gut from the heart or intellectually mm. like uh i don't it, think it's just you that it, it's like when i'm drawing from the heart everything gets very soft very round ah. and and the faces even take uh, uh like a a plumpier uh look when I'm drawing uh, from the head, everything gets very angular, very sharp. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like, I start my, uh, the, the, uh, there's a more elongated, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, bodies and, mm -hmm. and features. And everything gets very sharp. Um, oh, so I'll know now when I look at your stuff where your head was at. <laughs> Right. I'm trying to think of like uh, it's those two really pop out. Um, but um, and it's like I, I think it's if I'm not in the right stage, I, it's basically if I start with one and then I slowly while I'm working, I, I shift into a, another mode. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it's like what I already drew doesn't make sense and mm -hmm. I feel like redrawing it. Yeah. No, I know what you mean. It's not cohesive, right? It's just it. It's not. It's not speaking to me anymore. Like mm -hmm. uh, it's just like I had it. Everything was clicking. Why isn't it making any sense anymore? Like why uh, your doesn't brain and your it? your brain and your heart aren't talking to each other anymore? That's what it sounds yeah, like. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's it's just what I put down isn't uh, isn't resonating with uh, with what I was where where my head was at or is at. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I'm I'm getting too like I'm thinking really hard about the color of the vest, so I'm just gonna avoid it one more time. So yeah, just don't think about it. What does <laughs> yeah. it do and do? Just I know. Do. Just do it. Just do it. I, I watched the uh, what is it? The Nike movie that what is it called? Oh, uh, in Air or something? Yeah, Air. Yeah, yeah. That that was that was fun. I liked it. Yeah. I'm just curious how much of it is fact. Yeah, you always have to wonder, right? Like, I, I think zero percent, I mean, not zero. Um, It's always interpretation, right? Right. And if you're trying to tell a story, so there's always something in it. Those will be flowers. Okay. Yeah, if they look like flowers, they're flowers. They're flowers. They're not mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. At least not for this story. I don't feel like drawing mushrooms. Yeah, I have a story in mind that I wouldn't say mushrooms get in uh, are involved, but definitely some sort of uh, psychedelic. Hallucinogenic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Psychedelics. Yeah. Just like, uh, but going into a very weird realm uh, oh. with Mechanica. Yeah, that that works. I guess so, but it, it's not mushroom induced. <laughs> no, At least not would... that I'm aware of yet. No. Well, the sun's coming out, so the lightning's gone. The thunder. Great. So I'm no so more, uh, no more concern that the lights are going to go off. Yep, or no internet, which is not All fun. Right. Yeah. You guys don't go hunting? No. Not yet. 
<laughs> wait, wait until the until shit hits the fan. <laughs> right. And then uh and then we'll, I'll look we have wild turkeys so that's okay. I, they I don't know how fast they run but oh dude you know that turkeys could fly like really really high and really fast. Really? I had no idea because there was a turkey on our property and we thought like I thought it had a broken foot or a leg or something because it was hopping on one leg. It was, I guess that's just how it stood. So I was going to go try to help it. And it saw me and it just took off and it flew mm -hmm. like not even like two seconds up to the highest, tallest tree that we had. And I was in shock. It was this big chubby bird just like perched on wow. top of a branch. Yeah. And then I'm like, I guess turkeys can't fly. They're not like chickens. Well, chickens can't fly either. Well, or... I mean, not like that. I don't know for sure, so I don't want to. I don't want to sound stupid. So someone's gonna yeah. gonna go Google search that, right? Chickens fly. I think I, I think I saw a chicken in one of those videos where they threw it off, and it just it flapped its way down, like it, it didn't fly, but it was able to <laughs> safely flap its way down to the ground. Yeah, that's what I would do if I uh, had pretend wings, right? Like, right. I don't think I could. I don't know why I'm comparing myself to a chicken. <laughs> because i want to fly joe i do have those dreams sometimes i haven't had them in a while yeah i don't dream at all nowadays it seems like yeah it's like uh i heard that uh one of the tricks is meat and avocado ah. if, like um i remember uh you know again around uh easter or uh fourth of july we would always have a carne asada Carne mm -hmm. asada. Mm, After love it. And, love it. and um and that night I would always get these very vivid dreams and I didn't think anything of it. It's just like um I just overate, you know, because uh, again I would always overeat mm -hmm. when that was in the menu at first. Though. Yeah. And then uh, I read somewhere that yeah, as far as lucid dreaming, you can do that by eating consuming a lot of meat, beef, uh, and uh, avocado. Like this, oh. some, that, the combination of those two, right before you go to bed, uh, I guess induces something in your gut or your system that uh, makes you a lucid dream. Okay, well, you know what I'm going to try this week, just because I want to know if it's true or not. Yeah. I'm going to go get some tacos with avocado. Yeah. I don't dream anymore, Joe, because I'm living the dream right now. So I'm Oh, good. there you go. Yeah, see. By Lady Mechanica. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> in all in all seriousness, though, I uh, I remember when um, Vince sent me the first drawing you did of Lady Mechanica for the I think free comic book day ad or something. Right. I was I don't know why I was jealous, but I was like that is so not not cool to see that like that is just came out of nowhere and it's amazing so i was like i have to have well, this thank you <laughs> it's like uh i knew there was something there um it was out of the blue coming back from comic on that year mm -hmm. i went to a store a uh, beach ball comic book comic shop in in orange county i think i think that's where it's at. i don't know if it's still there uh but i walked in and you know i was just coming back from comic con on our way back, you know, back home. And um, as I'm perusing, uh, this girl comes in and asks for Lady Mechanica at the booth, you know, at the at the front. Mm, uh, nice. And he's like, do you mean Lady Robotica? Because there was a, a comic book at the time called Lady Robotica. And she goes, no, no, Lady Mechanica. Wow, and he's like, okay. no, I've never heard of it. And I jumped in. It's like, oh, that, you know, it's not out till... <laughs> it's like you know it's that's my book it's like, what yeah that's my that's my book and so mm -hmm. the fact that out of the blue someone was asking for it that is so uh, cool yeah i was like okay maybe there is something there yeah there's something there i'm gonna ask this question and you're probably not gonna have an answer but if you do mm -hmm. i'd be so grateful so have you looked into i know you you know film and like animation i know you you mentioned it a couple of times on your um facebook but it, it's it's just like one of those properties where you know it'd be really cool as an animation or a movie i'd love that to happen but it 
just hasn't worked out. Like uh, it's it's been optioned twice, mm-hmm. but it's like both times there were issues with uh, the direction of it. Mm. Well, actually, the first time, it the producer who was uh, um, pushing it left the company. So pretty much once you they, the producer leaves and someone else comes in, the new producer doesn't like to take on their old, old projects. Yeah, so I noticed got, that. So it got, uh, it got returned, you know, like, and then this last go around, it just didn't feel like a right fit. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'd like to uh, find the right fit, right? Well, it's just like, uh, it, I mean, it's like, uh, I don't mind if people like, again, Hollywood likes to change things up. Yeah, I get it. I, I, you know, yeah. it's, it's just like, you know, you can only, uh, everyone needs to put in their two cents and I get it. But if you're going to do that, you need to do something that's better than the crap that we've already come up with. True. If you're going to do something that's subpar, then, you know, uh, from the stuff that we've created that we've, uh, spent 10 years, you know, developing basically. Crafting, right. yeah. And it's like, then, then yeah, if, if you think you have a better take on it, cool. I, I feel like there's a much better take that um, that's out there that I know there's some creators out there that can really kick ass and take this to the next level. Mm-hmm. But um, but if you're not, then use what we've done and elaborate on it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, and I think that, you know, that's like, that's the norm. You know, what you're saying is a, a rule, not an exception, like uh, with people doing that. And that's why some properties, like there's a few that I've been, I've heard about for years, you know, that are going to get developed and they never, never really saw fruition because of the same thing that you're saying about yeah, changing a, it, you know. I I just, uh, I mean, um, I'd love to do a video game, love to do um, cartoon animation, um, you know, like live action. Uh, if, if there's a, someone out there who, likes what we're doing like i always saw this as this is uh, i mean she's basically tomb raider and indiana jones you know uh yeah with a alternate you know a very sci-fi looking uh background it's not selling it very well no you no you are (laughs) this is why i need other people to uh pitch uh, for you yeah (laughs) <laughs> I know that there's a very uh, loyal following. We have that. We have mm-hmm. a very loyal uh, yes, Lady Mechanica do. following. Um, so whatever we put out, you know, they're always uh, good at, at uh, supporting us. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, so yeah, if, if, that, if, that, if that is the case, then uh, I'm glad that it's there. Yep. They say a thousand loyal fans is better than millions, right? So. Yeah. We just, uh, like, I know we just want to get people to try the book. Like, yeah. uh, if they try it and you like it, cool. If you don't, then that's fine, you know? Well, you heard it here. Go try yeah, it. try the book. I'm begging you guys, please go try the book. <laughs> I need to pay my bills, you know? I'm just joking. Yeah. You don't have to pay the bills. No, someone else does. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I should I should not be saying John. that. <laughs> poor John. I'm putting all the all the pressure on <laughs> He's my sugar daddy. He's the artist that's making the money, believe it or not. Like between him and I, he's the one that's uh the breadwinner when it comes to his art, like it's just an unknown thing. He puts me to shame and I don't want to think about it. It makes me mad. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Someone made a joke. What was it? Uh, when I grow up, I want to be an artist. <laughs> and it's like, oh, honey, you can only be one. <laughs> you can't be both. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm still thinking about that. That's... uh. 
That's so simple and, and effective and it hurts and it's true. Well, it's uh, I think it's, it's that whole like, uh, always be enthusiastic about art, you know, have that mm -hmm. kid mentality that uh, I think once you lose it, you lose the creativity that that enthusiasm for uh, for doing or being creative. Yeah, it's, it's true. That is very true. Um, yeah, John's very childlike in many ways. <laughs> I hope he doesn't hear me in the other room, but if he does, it's okay. You well, met John, I mean, remember? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> yeah. No, it's he like, uh, he's a good guy. Yeah, he's my muse. He's definitely yeah. a good guy. Yeah. No, uh, no, I think uh, I get a lot of that, that, you know, a lot of growing up that I need to do sometimes. <laughs> well, you have to be gr a grown up kid, right? I guess. That's yeah. How I put it. yeah sure let's go with that <laughs> i'm a mature kid man at times i guess yeah it's a, the thing is it's uh i mean i'm i still get enthusiastic about stuff you know it's yeah. it's it, uh like uh gold michael golden again he's obviously one of my favorites and they're putting out idw is putting out a uh one of those artist editions. And mm -hmm. when I saw uh, what it's going to look like, uh, Scott Dumbier, he posted on his on his Facebook. It just looks so good. And I'm getting that kid feeling again. Same thing with McFarlane when I bought his, uh, his artist edition. And, you know, they have all these black and white images of his work. It's just like, uh, I'm right back to being that kid, you know, that first saw that stuff. Yeah, I'm the same way with some people as well, you know, um, yours, your work too. And uh, the one that I miss, you know, but I, I still get, I get to see it when Peter colors it is uh, Mike's work, you know, Mike mm -hmm. Turner. Yeah. yeah. That was my, that was my guy go-to to draw stuff. Obviously my style look uh, was like a knockoff of his for so long, but um, I miss his stuff, That's but you know. I see yeah, Dave Finch's and yours, so. <laughs> you have your own style now. I do. I think I do. So. so. For people who love Turner, I love him too. Yeah. Did I ever tell you, like, I only met him one time and it was the most awkward, um, uh, exchange because I was awkward and he, or... He felt he was such a nice guy. Um, I had a booth, and this was like in uh, the comic card convention in Seattle, way okay. before Emerald City came out. And Aspen was a studio, like they had already done Supergirl, and I think Soulfire is already out. And Mike was there, you know, and I went up to him just to uh, ask him if he ever got this painting I did for him when he got into that snowboarding accident, and it was like a All gift. Right. And, you know, of course, I should have thought like Mike probably gets like tons of fan art from people but i just mm. wanted to ask him anyways because uh david wool and everybody was going to give it to him and then mike felt so bad he thought that like oh my god i don't want to hurt her feelings like oh i didn't see it no but thank you but um he thought i was going to cry or, or be hurt and i was like oh no it's okay it's okay and then uh my editor was like see ya, you made michael turner think that you were going to cry i was like no i didn't i was just asking <laughs> it's all good but i felt stupid um yeah, that we was are, the only experience we've ever had him. Yeah. yeah, well, guess what, what year was that? Like mm. 90 or 2001? Oh, 2000, maybe five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Embarrassing. But I felt bad. I wanted to tell him, like, hey, it wasn't, it was okay that you didn't get it. I wasn't expecting it, but I just wanted to see if you got it because I stayed up till like four in the morning painting it because I was like, I'm going to give this to, Somebody no, to get Mike, to Mike, you know. Mike Turner made you cry. We'll <laughs> it's a better story. Because right. <laughs> he was so nice that, like, I was the only person that cried, so. Uh, was, uh, I think someone else, he made someone else cry. Like, just, uh, 
Yeah, you could ask uh, Frank or. Needed or it, the battery died or something. Yeah. So. It's never happened before. Oh, really? Huh. Yeah, I've never had that. Maybe I wasn't paying attention, but yeah, I don't remember ever ha it ever happening. So. Well, you remind me, I have to be more aware of that with my own camera and stuff too. Mm -hmm. The overheating thing is a big issue. Right. For uh, my, uh, what is it, professional camera? Right. Because I did a shoot, I was doing a uh, video shoot yesterday and all of a sudden the screen turned off. I was like, oh, well, you can't have that happen when you're filming a documentary because if you miss something, that's it, right? Right. Uh, but back to drawing comics. This is and my so, favorite part. Was it, uh, as I was saying, it's like, if you ask Peter or Frank or Vince, one of them would know uh, there was a fan that broke down and started crying when they met Mike. Oh, wow. Okay, I'm going to ask him then. Mm. I thought when you said some, he made someone cry, it was in a bad way. <laughs> no, no, it's like they were just so happy. So, to oh, I'm sure it happened more than once then. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember anyone else. I, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone else having that that happened to them that a fan is so uh, oh, amazed at meeting them that they just break down it's been, it's maybe the beatles i mean that's a different thing no right? I, I mean in comics yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> i mean what is it bieber and the bts and yeah taylor swift and all that yeah. i think we need cooler hair dude mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he, he did that, didn't he? Um, I almost want to, I mean, you're right about doing a documentary about him because you have to go back and revisit that and, and get that magic and right. what exactly that was like, you know? But based off of what I've heard, it's, it's his fan interactions too. It's uh, he was very a nice, special. He, yeah. Maybe too nice. That's why they thought I was going to cry. <laughs> I'm a fragile soul, Joe. There you go. <laughs> oh, my phone's getting hot. Man. Oh no! But you look like you're mostly done already. I'm still like. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm. Uh, I just need to do the background. It's just like, oh yeah, this. No, I, so if I shut down, you know why? Yeah. Well, you know what we could do is just like just wrap it up and then say, hey, this is. We're gonna finish this. You're gonna see how awesome it's going to look on uh uh you know on the kickstarter and um i want to deck this thing out though and now that i've gotten this far i'm like hey joe i'm going to fully render this thing all right so, yeah so uh i can't please. wait to see it finish. yeah i can't wait to see you do the uh dark you know what i realized that i you just started inking not that long ago so it's kind of cool seeing your stuff inked right now by you it's uh it's not as uh, clean as i'd like it to be but you know it's getting there Work in progress, right? Right. Oh, yeah. that's looking really good. So wow. I'm going to put textures up the mofo on this one, if you don't mind. Like, I just uh, I just remember uh, using salt. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot who taught me that. But yeah, you put salt on the background and then you... Yeah, you know, let it absorb and gives you... Get all fancy get pants. I'm going to do that fancy stuff for yeah. this, if you don't mind. <laughs> no, I do whatever you... It's like you do whatever you want to do with it. Awesome. Cool. Well, uh, I guess please help support our Kickstarter. Starting yeah, I think by the, time, <laughs> yeah, by, the, by the time this, this hits, can, we should be live already, right? Yeah, we'll be live. So this is going to be like midway, kind of like, you know, like an update right. type thing. So um, this is just a progress. And I actually have another episode planned uh, when I was on my road trip and I was drawing uh, the pages, remember, in the campgrounds and stuff. So that's right. what I'm doing. So that'll cool. be a third episode for this. While you're at Comic-Con, I think that's what's going to premiere. So Sounds good. I'm doing my thing, man. So I can't wait to see that finished. I'm sure you'll probably scan it and then I'll see it online. So um, I'll do the yeah, same no, with we'll, this one. So. We'll make sure and send it to you. Awesome. Well, hopefully your phone doesn't like explode or something. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just wait till it dies. No, I don't know. I can't afford to pay you for that phone. 
right? Because I'm doing watercolor, so it's going longer. Imagine if you're doing like oils with David Finch, you got to watch paint dry. All right. All righty, man. Well, you have a good evening, and uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. And all right, I'll put the links to the uh, Kickstarter in the video description. And uh, it's fun hanging out with you again. I guess we'll do it yeah. again soon, though, for sure. It's sure. awesome. Yeah, we should do that. Yes. All right. Sweet. Um, you, uh, you have, you a, good have a good one. You too. All right. Bye. Bye.